How's it playing, guys? Lance Corbal Hawk 30 here, and it's been a good long while. But finally, I'm back to Scooter Tricks, the abridged, but more specifically, a little a side series of Scooter Tricks, the abridged, that being Royal Correspondence, episode 8 through 10. That's correct. I would be doing episodes 8 through 10 of Scooter Trick, the abridges little side series, Royal Correspondence, which goes back and forth between the two channels. The the Canterlot, which has their own type of uh, MLP abridged, and uh, Scooter Trick's the abridges channel, obviously. So I'm just going to do episodes 8 through 10, do a relatively short. Like These videos are not as long as the full episodes of Scooter Trick's the abridge, which they always find a way to get it at 10 minutes even. So, but these are a little, these are not at that dead set time limit. So, these ones are shorter, so I can kind of get more episodes in, in a video. So, I'm just going to do episodes 8 through 10 of Royal Correspondence, and then at some point in the future, go do episode 19, which it seems is where I left off on Scooter Tricks The Abridged. So, yeah, but Royal Correspondence, episode 8. And Rosie is going to be here, just kind of napping, just kind of, kind of resting. Yeah, she's a good doggo, good doggo. Anyways, Royal Correspondence, episode 8, which apparently has been re-uploaded. Uh, yeah, so we're going to do 8 through 10. Link to the original videos. Actually, I'm just going to link to the whole playlist just so everyone can get an in full-size ingestion of Scooter Tricks The Abridged up to this point and beyond, so they can see all of it on their own time before I get to reactions for stuff, plus so you can see which ones I've already reacted to. I've got a playlist designated for Scooter Tricks The Abridged, however, so you can see which ones I have already reacted to, etc. But anyways, Royal Correspondence, Episode 8. Links... Like I said, links to the playlist will be in the description. Please make sure you've seen them before you watch my reaction to them. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and go. Dear Luna, you're not going to freaking believe what happened today. Uh-huh. Fuck yeah, the mail's here! <laughs> now who the hell's been fucking with reality? Ah! Shit, Celestia! <laughs> God damn, I should have guessed! <laughs> hey, forgot how crass this sign is! <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It looks like a mite. Look what you did. What the Look. fuck is that? Can you even a see fourth dimensional seeing? being. Oh, it helps regulate the laws of reality. It looks like a testicle. A fourth dimensional <laughs> being. It helps regulate the laws of reality. It looks like a testicle. I think it is. Damn it, Celestia! I can't believe you. You know how much damage crossing into another dimension does. How do you do it? I gave you that motherfucking mailbox. How much more you think you need? I'm afraid you have the wrong culprit. Bullshit! <laughs> I know your rule breaking ass used that mirror pool. I want to know why! Wait, we only went through because the ponies from the other side of the mirror pool came through first. Oh, I see. You think you can throw me off your trail by offering them up instead, huh? Luna, shut up. Do you want to be unborn? It's true, though. We only crossed over because they came here first. We weren't trying to break any rules. <laughs> so if they the real criminals, you ain't gonna mind me going and talking to them about this, will you? No, wait. Aha! I knew <laughs> it. You all are about to be in a world of pain, little big horse ponies. No, they did go through, but I don't want them to get in trouble either. It was just a misunderstanding. It's all fixed now. Shit. Misunderstanding. It was. <laughs> We've taken care of it. Yeah. No one's crossing through any more dimensions. Me and Luna are just sending letters to each other. Ah, fuck! <laughs> now listen here, little girl. <laughs> Being besties with your alternate self is dangerous. Real dangerous. I'll look the other way <laughs> this one last time on you using that mirror pool. Hell, I'll even let you keep sending your little parallel self letters, but you gotta make me a promise. Anything. What's that? No matter what happens, no matter what the future may bring for that world, you will not interfere. Got it? I don't care if she begs for your help. You stay in your reality. Okay. I mean it. I don't care how much time passes. I don't care if it's tomorrow, a year from now, or a fucking millennium. <laughs> you stay out of that world's affairs, and you make sure they stay out of yours. I will. I'm serious now. Okay. You better not even think about trying to fuck me. You try and fuck me, I will come back and bust your ass. I won't fuck you. Not if you know what's good for you. <laughs> if 
I can come back here. There ain't gonna be no talking, just a lot of ass whooping. <laughs> ha! One ass, two ass, red ass, <laughs> blue ass. <laughs> I want the entire kingdom's worth of asses, don't you think I would? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is he gone? Yes. Jesus, dude. It's okay. It's so mean. It is. Uh -huh. Rude. Do we have to let it get away with that? Unfortunately, yes. I assume. Despite its nut sacky appearance, <laughs> the dimensional beings are quite powerful. Not something we want. I to imagine. I'm boring. What is that? A fate worse than death. So yeah, that happened. Celestia said that fourth dimensional beings are in charge of like regulating the laws of metaphysics and that his visit means that we yeah. must have screwed something up somewhere when our elements cross dimensions. Yeah. Exactly what we did though is anyone's guess. That excitement aside, my life is pretty normal, I guess. I usually wake up around the crack of noon, I get ready for the day, and sometimes I go with Celestia to do loyal stuff. Uh huh. She's trying to slowly ease me back into the life of a monarch, but there's still a lot for me to relearn. Uh huh. We're just taking it one step at a time. When Celestia doesn't need me, the only thing I have to do on an average day is put the sun to bed and raise the moon, which only takes like an hour apiece. Okay. And once you get them going, they kind of take care of themselves. The rest of the day, I just hang out in the castle. It's super fun. Every pony is really sweet, and the guards help me out if I need any assistance. Um, let's see. I like to explore the castle. There's okay. a lot of it. And our library is always fun to look through. It's a big castle. What I really like to do, though, is play my sister's video games. Video games. She has a ton. I've been trying to beat this game called Blackthorn. It's a bitch. I play by myself most of the time, but Celestia plays with me whenever she can. Oh, and the snacks. I can't forget about that. Oh, boy. The kitchen staff is always Of course, the modern food. snacks. Pizzas, Lunchables, grilled cheese. Doritos and Mountain Dew. That's the gamer fuel right there. They also try and feed me really gross stuff, too, though, like caviar and foie gras. <laughs> I also watch a lot of TV. The other day, Celestia had this movie on, and it was so dumb. What is it? It was about this kid from Chicago who moves to this small country town. Uh, there was this priest, and music was banned or something, and the lead to a warehouse we could punch dance out his rage. The movie sucked, and so did the lead. Celestia told me his name, but I can't remember it. He reminds me of a poor mayor's Patrick Swayze, God rest his soul. <laughs> starting to ramble, so he Hold reminds on. me of a poor mayor's Patrick Swayze. Get, get back here, you! I will see what that was. She reminds me of a poor mare's pet. <laughs> Why? Why? I see so Why? What is that? I'm not, I'm not even. <laughs> So, okay, so quick question. Are you talking about the original Footloose or the remake Footloose? That's a good question. God rest his soul. I'm starting to ramble, so I'll stop here. Bye-bye for now. Love, Luna. All right, on to the next one, boys and girls. Hold on. I've been getting notifications out of the butt here. Let me check these just for a sec, just for a moment. Okay, okay. Uh, oh. And one more little check here on my notifications. And... Okay. They've been checked. World Correspondence, Episode 9. Whoa. I didn't expect to find you here. Luna, Celestia, 
Aberforth. The fourth Steven. I forgot about that being a running gig. I remember that bit. Away. I need a little serenity right now. What's wrong? I wish to be alone. It's the war, isn't it? What happened? Well, the zebras surrendered. What? And our northern front is faltering. I... are we... losing? Celestia. What? Are we losing? No. Damn it! We are, aren't we? I knew we shouldn't have hired those children. Whoa, hey, relax. Relax! <laughs> Don't children! Oh, wait. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scooter Scootaloo. I forgot about that detail. <laughs> Somber's army right got a couple lucky and you victories. Me to relax. It? We are, aren't we? Oh, no, no. I knew we should. I missed something. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, relax. Relax. Don't tell Look, me it's to not relax. That bad, You're in really. serious Just danger right now. And you expect me to relax? Doesn't mean they've won Princess the war. Celestia, urgent news. Sombra's army has converted at least 200 of our soldiers into zombies, and the number is growing rapidly. Oh, hell no! Are you kidding me? He also sends this message. <clears throat> hey, fatty, your soldiers look good on my side, lol. Oh, no, he didn't just say that! <laughs> yeah, he did just say that. Well, I, I read that from his message. How dare he! How <laughs> dare he take my soldiers! Those are my soldiers! <laughs> Enough of this. Should we send him a message back, ma'am? Oh, I'll send him a message. Sombra's about to experience a harsh climate change. What are you going to do? Luna, hold the fort. I'm going in. What? Nuke. You're going to fight? Yep. My soldiers need me. I'm leaving you in charge. I... Oh, boy. What? I said I'm leaving you in charge. I know what you said. I just... don't believe it. I'm like, do you want respect around here, Luna? Uh... <laughs> yes. Do you want to take part in ruling the empire? Yes. Then earn it. Take over from me while I'm gone. What are you I gonna will. do? I'll prove myself to you. No, what not gonna... to me. To them, our subjects. They look to us for guidance, Luna, for strength. Uh -huh. They are our subjects, and it is our duty to protect them. Uh -huh. No one messes with my ponies except me. Now keep our <laughs> empire safe. <laughs> of I expect no less. Do you understand? Yes. Good. Now, I don't know when I'll be back, but if the sun doesn't come up, if you can, I want you to do it. Dear Luna, I found your last letter extremely interesting, and I'd like to discuss it further, but I'm afraid I'm not in the position to do so at the time. Uh-huh. War has been declared on Equestria. Oh. We are just under a week That's what that sound is. And things aren't looking good. Celestia is off to help fight on the Northern Front. I myself will look after the Empire. I don't know how this conflict will turn out, but mm. I'd like to tell you again how much I appreciate your letters. You are a true friend. Thank you for everything. Luna. Mm. From Luna to Luna. Luna 1 and Luna 2. Next episode. On to the next one, let's go inject the end of our veins! Yeah. Hmm. Hey, you seemed really troubled this evening. What's wrong? Look, we're going to war. Luna doesn't know if you'll win. This could be the last time I talk to her. This is grim news. Uh -huh. You? Hmm? That thing, the fourth dimensional being. It knew it must have. Why else would it have told me not to cross over again? <laughs> it knew Universe A was going to war. It knew I'd want to help. How could it have known? Those mm. creatures do not measure time as we do. Yeah. They can only conceive time as a linear progression. Yeah, like I would imagine that any type of being that governs intradimensional travel and exchanges of information and matter and etc any being that can monitor that and 
kind of safeguard the barriers like that would probably have some kind of ability to see what's about to happen next to be able to go, hey, 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 hey. you stop it. No. You do not. Don't you try it. Good girl. Past, present, future, they're all happening simultaneously. Uh -huh. so we cannot experience it as it truly is. What if they need our help? What if they lose their war? They could die. Even when not faced with war, death is always a possibility. Oh, yeah. Life is fleeting. It is best not to consider the what ifs. This is the worst day of my life. Really? Let me turn this up because for some reason this particular episode is pretty quiet. Not to be cynical, so that's better. But that's only because your memory is short. We've faced far worse tragedy than this, I promise you. You have? Yes. Many like? Times. And even during the bleakest of days, we have always managed to pull through. How? How did we survive things worse than this? <coughs> this doesn't really affect us, but it hurts so much. You had each other, that's how. My friend did die. Death is a part of life, and our lives are long. Before our time has come, we will lose many ponies we love. <laughs> I won't sugarcoat it for you, Luna. It doesn't get easier. You will experience every loved one's passing as though it were the first. The only way to get through the pain is not to dwell on it. How do you do it? Deal with loss? Not just that, but everything. Mm. All the tragedy that comes with life, I know you've experienced a lot. I didn't expect this to have a more serious tone like this. I really did not. If it were less serious, I imagine we'd be having a couple jokes like, uh, it's like, how do I deal with it? I got old Jack here to keep me company, Mr. Jim. Oh, Tito's. One should never ignore the sorrows of life. I thought you said not to dwell on it. Yes. Do not dwell on pain, but more importantly, do not ignore it. During my many centuries in Equestria, I've experienced much heartache. Uh -huh. I've made mistakes. I've hurt ponies I never wish to hurt. Uh -huh. Just because I do not dwell on these mistakes does not mean that I ignore them. I learn from them. That's the greatest lesson I've learned in Scooby. all of my years as a ruler. You mm. must learn from your mistakes. How? Well, whenever one Patience. of my decisions yields harsh consequences, I stop and think very hard about the choice I've made. How is that any different from dwelling on it? It's all about how much time you spend thinking about it. Whenever Fair. something I've done hurts someone in an unjustifiable manner, Perspective I try two. my best to feel the full extent of their pain, though I don't do so for any longer than necessary. Then I ask myself, could I have prevented this from happening? Sometimes mm. the answer is no, but... Sometimes no, not, sometimes yes. yes. Depends. Then you have to think about which choice of yours it was that caused the pain. Then you figure out alternative choices you could have made that would have been better. Once you feel that you've analyzed your decision enough to make a better choice in the future, you move on. You hope that whatever situation you are in doesn't occur again. Learning from history, whether it be history that you have not experienced, or history that you have experienced. Learn from the past. Learn from it. Simba. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get a joke in there. But you know now that if it does, you'll make a better decision. Or at least try to. In the mm -hmm. end, all anyone can expect from you is that you try and learn each time you screw up. Is that all? No, there is something else you must consider. Something equally important that goes hoof in hoof with one's poor decisions. What's that? Your good ones. The decisions you made that were able to bring the ones you Yes. Enjoyed. One must you not only look at... Your time thinking of one must not only look at the bad. You'll go into dark places then. One must also look at the light for the tunnels. About your shortcomings, you'll forget all of the wonderful things you've done. Mm -hmm. Our failings tend to stick out to us more than our triumphs, but even in our darkest hour, we must never forget how much we mean to the ponies that care about us. Okay. 
Does that help? Mm -hmm, a little. Can you meet? Do you think you'll be okay? Of course. Celestia A is as intelligent and powerful as she is unpredictable. I feel sorry for the poor bastard that picked a fight with her. Get. We didn't have to fight. <laughs> We're opponents of this universe. And... Yeah, the unpredictability of that other Celestia is, uh... <laughs> Nightmare fuel. And all the others will never know. I know mm -hmm. you do. Sometimes it's necessary, though. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to fight to protect the ones you love. It doesn't make it any less ugly, though. War is a terrible, terrible thing. Even if your side is victorious, no one truly wins. If you ever have to fight, make sure it's for the right reasons. I will. Good. I promise. Good lessons to be had. Okay, so wait, we're going over there all episodes 1 through 10 right now. So was this intended to be the last one of this particular season or the last one for the foreseeable future at, at that particular time? There are... <laughs> We're strapped and nailed. <laughs> I don't know if I caught that before in a previous episode. <laughs> Restaurant and nailed. What does that mean? A shitty restaurant. Uh, man. Oh! I heard his whoosh and I'm like, is that in the thing? Last piece of fan art. Oh. Aw. That's cool. If you send us stuff, we will feature it. Well, that's nice. Alright, so that was the final episode of Royal Correspondence for that particular time period, as I assumed it was. And then they pretty much said... I don't know why that's the sound I decided to make, but it is. Um, I'm a butt. I'm a butt. This is the fourth reaction video I've recorded in a row. I... The A-10s are about. Yeah, A-10 drills. They get low sometimes. They get low like... <sighs> Although, they're A-10 Thunderbolts. Thunderbirds, so... Or... A-10 Warthog. A-10 Thunderbird. Whatever you want to refer to them as. But they do a, a fair amount of aerial practice out here from time to time and it's since they're a10s it's always cool to see but anyways that's the fourth video i've done in a row and i'm almost in the mood to do some more a10 <laughs> but if i do continue to record more tonight I have to take a bit of a break for my butt, if nothing else. So anyways, but that was a fun three little episodes of Royal Correspondence. But then next, back to Scooter Tricks, the abridged proper. So, with that out of the way, what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Like if you enjoyed. Comment which one of these three Royal Correspondence videos you liked the most. Mine would probably have to be the one with the fourth dimensional being. Just because of the lulls. Subscribe if you're new. And tap the bell to get notified whenever I upload a video. So you don't miss any reactions, gameplay, or otherwise for me. Also, go check out my Discord. Link is also now in the description. Come join. We will talk. Post memes, songs, videos, artwork. You can self promote your own stuff and just have some fun. And as I... Uh, I don't know if I said it in this reaction video, but uh, check out Hyperfrost Productions. Link to that channel will be in the description. We take retro style games and do voiceover dubs for them. And if they don't have any dubs, and if they didn't have any dialogue in game at all, as in no text or anything like that, then we have come up with scripts for some of those in the past before. It's been fun. This has been Lance Block 30 and Rosie signing off.